Let's find out how the ASUS TUF A15 gaming laptop with AMD Ryzen 5 4600H and Nvidia GTX 1650 Ti performs in 20 different games at all setting levels. I'll also compare it against some other laptops to help you decide if it's worth it. I've got the FA506II model here, so these are the specs we're dealing with. 6 core CPU, my first time with a GTX 1650 Ti. 16 gig of memory and dual channel, and a 144Hz 1080p screen. I'll test response time too. The Tough A15 is also available with different specs. I've still got the 1660Ti model yet to test. Otherwise you can find prices for different models linked in the description. The ASUS Armory Crate software lets you select between different performance modes. I've done all testing with turbo mode enabled for best performance, and this raises the fan speed and applies the following overclock to the GPU. We'll only be covering gaming performance in this video, so look out for the upcoming full review and thermal testing videos. Let's start out by going through all games at all setting levels, then afterwards we'll see how the ASUS TUF A15 gaming laptop compares with some other laptops. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested using the game's built-in benchmark tool, and I wasn't even able to test ultra settings because the GTX 1650 Ti graphics has 4GB of VRAM, and ultra settings needs more than this. Even with low settings, we're just under 60 FPS. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode. There wasn't too much of a difference between ultra and high settings. Both were around the 60 FPS mark and were playable, though low settings was approaching 100 FPS if you prefer frame rate over looks. Control was only seeing above 60 FPS with a low setting preset, though honestly I think the game still looks pretty good at lower settings anyway, and I'd much prefer the higher performance during fights. But at the same time, it doesn't really feel laggy to me even at higher settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark. Medium settings was just able to get us above 60 FPS in this test, and we'll see how other laptops compare in this game soon. Apex Legends was tested with either all settings at maximum or all settings at the lowest possible values, as it doesn't have predefined setting presets. It played fine for me at max settings, though we could greatly improve performance at minimum. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was tested in campaign mode, and I've also tested it with the settings either maxed out or at minimum. There wasn't as big of a jump going to minimum in this game, but doing so did at least push us past 60 FPS. Borderlands 3 was tested using the game's built-in benchmark, and medium settings was needed to hit 60 FPS. Anything above this and we start losing performance quickly, likely as the higher settings are more GPU heavy and the 1650 Ti becomes the main limitation. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was also tested with the benchmark tool, and again, much lower frame rates were seen at the higher setting levels. Notably because more than 4GB of VRAM is needed here. Fortnite was tested with the replay feature, and as a less demanding title, it was still running quite well with the highest epic setting preset. However, medium would have been a much better option to make use of the 144Hz display. Overwatch is another less demanding game and was tested in the practice range. Once more at the highest epic setting preset, the frame rates were good, and we could make large improvements with lower settings. CSGO was tested using the Uletical FPS benchmark, and it was doing alright. I mean, the game can basically run on a potato after all. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane, and we're still reaching decent frame rates in this esports title. Even high settings were getting average FPS above the screen's refresh rate. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built-in benchmark using Vulcan, and as another less demanding title, the frame rates weren't too bad even with ultra settings, though we could still get much better results with lower presets. High settings for instance looks like a decent match for the 144Hz screen. Metro Exodus was tested using the built-in benchmark. Most parts of the game perform a fair bit better than this, so don't take these results as a good indication of what to expect throughout the entire game. It's more of a worst case. The Division 2 was also tested with a built-in benchmark. High settings couldn't quite reach 60fps, however low was reaching above this even for the 1% low, with averages surpassing 100fps. I've only tested Monster Hunter World a couple of times, but the results match what I've seen so far, in that generally the 1% low performance isn't too far behind the average frame rates, so high settings still played pretty well. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and the performance was quite low here at higher setting levels, most likely due to the lower powered graphics. Medium settings were needed to hit 60fps, though I think the game runs pretty well without high frame rates. Far Cry New Dawn was also tested with the game's benchmark, and we were just able to scrape 60fps with the ultra setting preset in this test. 
The Witcher 3 was a bit choppy at max settings, noticeably better with the high preset as even the 1% low is now above the averages seen at Ultra, and high settings gets us above 60fps for the average. F1 2019 was tested using the game's benchmark tool, and like the last game, there's a big boost in performance simply by dropping down to high settings, though it was doing alright even maxed out. Let's also take a look at how this config of the ASUS TUF A15 gaming laptop compares with other laptops. Use these results as a rough guide only, as they were tested at different times with different drivers. In Battlefield 5, I've got the A15 highlighted in red. This is the first laptop with GTX 1650 Ti graphics I've ever tested, so there's no others to compare against at the moment. However, I found it interesting that the lower wattage part was beating the 85W 5500M just below it in this test. Though of course there is also a pretty big difference between the older 3750H and 4600H2. These are the results from Far Cry 5 with ultra settings in the built-in benchmark. This time the 5500M was just above it. It's clear that this part is designed to compete with the 5500M in terms of performance, as it's filling in the gap that existed between Nvidia's GTX 1650 and 1660 Ti options, which was quite big at around 50% on average. These are the results from Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the built-in benchmark at highest settings. Again, the 5500M with lower CPU was slightly ahead, though that is a much higher wattage GPU. And again, the 1650Ti seems to be nicely filling in the gap that exists between the 1650 and 1660Ti laptops. I'll do some proper comparisons once I have more laptops with it. The Tough A15 with these specs is able to offer a decent gaming experience. Just be prepared to lower the settings in more demanding titles. Realistically, to get full use out of the 144Hz screen with the 1650Ti, you either need to use minimum settings or mostly play less demanding esports titles. While testing these 20 games out, I honestly cannot say that I had any issues with the panel, but I don't think I'm personally that sensitive to slower response times. Which is why I recently invested in the tools needed to measure response time. So far the A15 is the slowest laptop panel I've ever tested by a fair amount. Granted I've only tested about 5 laptops with this so far. You can check the link in the description if you need an explanation on what all of these numbers mean. But the key takeaway is on average the greater grey response time is 19.3 milliseconds. I'll cover thermals in depth in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed for that one as well as for the upcoming full review. For now, let me know what you thought of the gaming performance from the 1650Ti down in the comments. I'll also be testing some other A15 configurations with different specs over the coming weeks too.